How's it going fellow traders? It's Magic Trader here. And today is Thursday, January 25th, 2018. And I just want to go through all the pairs to see if there's any trading opportunities coming up soon and to see uh, what trading signals uh, there have been. Okay, so let's take a look here at gold. So we're reacting from this monthly area of demand to the upside. And we've pretty much, you know, we, we removed that area of supply, right? Price came back to this area and now we're getting that push up and we broke through this area of weekly supply. So this is an observation that has triggered something in my mind because on my journey of trading, you know, you are focused on so much because you're learning only what you have on, on your radar, right? You make certain observations and you you try to uh, assess the markets based on what you know you should be assessing. And as you're analyzing the markets and the more time and effort you put into the markets, you start to come to certain realizations about the markets. And so I'm always learning things that are new, always. I'm always learning something new and with respect to gold uh, it was time for me to learn a new lesson okay so we had a weekly supply area here and we broke through it I was saying that I was expecting a drop yes we got a response from there in fact the first response was right here we got a reaction it pushed higher a reaction and then finally we broke through that area so I've learned something about this scenario why it, why it reacted that way and why it broke through and so this is going to be a very valuable lesson for me and I'm going to be implementing what I learned from this scenario into my trading plan so from now on now that I know that this is now that I have this type of situation in my radar I will be observing the markets from now on and learning from this scenario. I'm going to be watching the markets to see if I have any other types of scenarios that come up similar to this one. And then I'm going to be learning the different nuances of this type of scenario and how different scenarios who have basically the same, uh, the same thing happening but it may be different types of zones or the formation um, or, and the structure of all the candles may be different. So I'm going to be taking what I've learned from this scenario and applying it to uh, future scenarios. So it was a big lesson here. You know, I knew, I knew that we were going to get a push up here. Like I was very confident that was, was what was going to happen. But I figured we were going to get a drop from here first and then around here make the reversal. Instead, we just broke right through. And I understand why. I understand why now. So now it's about what's the next opportunity. Well, the next opportunity for, for me to, 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 uh, to trigger a, a trade on uh, gold would be right here at this uh, area of demand here. The only thing is I want the weekly chart to consolidate a little bit further like this and uh, once it does so then I'll take trades from here and uh, and, and take them higher that's that's for sure so I need a further push to the upside and uh, once I get that I need that I need price to consolidate away nicely and then um, and then a nice a nice drop for me to take a, a position long okay let's go where's my there we go so that's what I'm waiting for on gold I am looking to take long positions just wanting just wanting to uh, to get that consolidation and then a drop. All right. Oil, oil. I'm pretty surprised with. I can't believe just how much it's continuing to go higher. Just when you think it can't go any longer, it it continues to push. So, 
Uh, I am expecting for the institutions to to sell off um, and for price to drop down here. But at this point, if this 6842 area doesn't get taken out, I'm not expecting price to drop. Now, do I want to take longs here? Uh, not really. You know, even though all the trends are up, I really don't want to take it along here. It could even work. And then we could see price even heading higher. You know, that, that may happen. But, um, you know, weekly is overextended. Monthly has a nice move to it. Uh, weekly is really overextended. I was really, really wanting for them to come back. So you know what I'll do? I'll keep an eye here on this level. I will. I'll keep an eye here on this level. And if there's a really nice momentum shift to the upside here, then maybe I'll uh, uh, maybe I'll, I'll look to take a trade to the upside. Okay. So. But I won't be uh, ecstatic about that because it's just so, so overly done at this point. So I'm going to be very cautious about this one. I want to get on board this long train because, you know, eventually I do believe we're going to see a big push up here. But, um, but I'm very cautious because we're very overexposed. And not just that, but if you take a look at uh, oil here, right, we're in the 84s. This is pretty pretty high up there, you know, very overextended. Uh, so I'm expecting some profit taking to to take place. All right, the U.S. dollar dropping and dropping and dropping and just melting through zones like it's nothing. Again, I have to apply what I've learned from that gold scenario onto this chart, right? In terms of um, higher time frame zones being melted right through like they were nothing you know we had one zone here melted right through this one was expected to melt right through because it was poorly formed but uh, you know this one here was really nice nice formation melted right through now we have this zone here and we're reacting from that one but here's the area that I'm expecting a really solid move to the upside okay um, but let's take a look here I want to show you something let's look at a higher time frame scenario here right here so there's a trend line going up here and that's a confluence with this area right over here so there's a decent chance that we get a really nice bounce and move upwards from here a really good chance I think longer term we're going to see price drop all the way down here that's what I think that's what I'm expecting just by analyzing the charts I think seeing a drop down here is very very possible but you can't ignore the fact that there's a three month trend line here and a wonderful zone right here. Can't help notice that. So um, for the time being, we got a really nice area of weekly supply here. If we get a decent consolidation away and then a push up, I'll, I'll look to short there. That's for sure. I'll look to short here. And so let's take a look. We definitely got the two to one move away. Yep. Yeah. So, some consolidation. A move up. I'll take shorts and aim it. Aim for down here. And then have final targets down here. So, let's see. Ba -ba -ba. Do, 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 do. Yep. And that's what I see happening here. So, looking to take shorts only if it consolidates away and, 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 and retraces up here. So that's it for the US dollar. And let's take a look at Aussie. Aussie's not pushing up nearly as much as I thought it would. So, we've taken out this daily area here. 
which is nice. Um, weekly, kind of overextended, but we could still see a bigger move because all of this has pretty much been dealt with. In fact, let me take a look here. Do do. Let me check to see. No, the, these peaks haven't been taken out, but I expect that that will happen. Okay, I am expecting that move, like that. I'm expecting that move up like that. So, oops. Okay, so two candles up th from that area, that imbalance that we were, we've been watching for quite some time. Really nice push upwards. So now, I wanted price to come down here for long, but never got that pullback. Right now, we're we've got uh, nothing decent. If it continues heading higher, closes up here, I'll take a long here because we'll have weekly trend up. You know, a nice uh, push to the upside on the monthly. Yeah, that might work. On confirmation, I think. So I'll keep that there. H4 demand zone's off, daily demand zone. Yeah, because it's it's quite overextended. The weekly chart is quite tricky when looking at it, so it'd be safer to, to take trades off of confirmation. Wait for a momentum shift to the upside. And only if I get that nice consolidation away. So let's just write an alert here. Okay. Aussie CAD. What do we see here? So Aussie CAD. We have a nice area of weekly weekly demand that I'm going to be looking to take longs from. Okay, I think there's high probability that we see a nice move to the upside from here. Okay, so let's take a look. I bet you it's made a nice... Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I'm looking to take longs from down here. That's what I'd like to do. I think that's a good quality trade. I'm expecting the Aussie to get stronger. All right? And I also expect the uh, CAD to get weaker. So, because if you take a look at the, the U.S. CAD, as the U.S. dollar has been dropping, that U.S. CAD has been holding, right? We were we would have been expecting the CAD to get stronger as the U.S. dollar was weakening, but against the U.S. dollar, that that uh, that strength is not really coming into the markets, which tells me when the U.S. dollar does eventually find some support and we get a push to the upside expecting that US CAD to uh, to fly to the upside as well which would help support this move here boom like that so longs at weekly demand Aussie Yen. So the Aussie Yen H4 demands off daily demand zone. Yeah, so those trades never triggered. Or daily demand zones off of weekly demand zone long down here. Yeah, so that hasn't been triggered yet. So expecting a drop down here and then I'll take trades to the upside if I get nice momentum shift that is okay Aussie Kiwi need weekly supply out for longs yet yeah, need this out for longs which that hasn't happened and no shorts so no trades here just yet don't see anything decent CAD Yen new daily demand zones at weekly demand zone lower right here so New daily demand zones, nothing has been formed yet. 
Yeah, so the weak Canadian, so this should actually... No shorts. Weekly depends on out for shorts. I think that would be good. Because if eventually I'm expecting um, CAD yen weakness to come in to play. But the only thing is I'm expecting uh, US yen to rally. But that could be some time. So I'll need to see this taken out, this zone first. That's for sure. So let me put... Uh, an alert here. Eighty-seven twenty-one. There. So let's see if that happens. Euro US dollar. So this one's also been a, a tricky one. So we got, we now have a monthly area of supply in control. This area of monthly supply was responsible for removing a three month demand zone. So it is important. Um, but since the US dollar can drop even further to its monthly demand, this could break up. It could, it could break up higher, that's for sure. You can do that. And then reverse from there like that so I am watching this one um, let's break it down to the four hour we had trade triggers here and here to go long really nice really nice risk reward on that and so now, on the daily charts, I'm waiting for price to retrace. Ideally, I'm waiting for price to retrace down to weekly demand areas. Potentially here, or here, to get in long. If that doesn't happen and price continues to rally higher, then... Um, I don't have to wait to see what the formation is. We can have a, a nice weekly area of demand here soon. That's possible. I'll have to wait and see. Yeah, that might work. I'll have to wait and see if price actually does break through this area or not. If it breaks through, if 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 price manages to break through this monthly uh, supply area, then it's it's all about you know, getting through this three month trend line. Because just like with the US dollar, there's a three month trend line right here. Pew, right there. And this zone is located in confluence right with that trend line. So we could see momentum shift and move to the downside like that. That is possible. But, you know, six month trend line as well. But the only thing is, you look at the charts, you got this really nice six-month bullish engulf, and it looks like price just wants to come up here. And it's up here at the one... What's that number? 134s. That we would expect to see a big drop from. So that's very possible. In the long run, but right now, you know, this this bullish pressure is just phenomenal, and um, yeah, it's all dependent on whether this zone gets taken out or not. If it holds, and we get some nice short trades, um, counter trend short trades on the on the um, daily chart, I might look to take some short positions counter trend. But um, looks like right now, price just wants to. Uh, go higher, but you got to. I got to be very careful here because, yeah, even though I think longer term we're going to see 135s, um, you, you can't go long now with a monthly supply and control. We have to wait for it to uh, for price to drop and give us some really long, nice long entries from some good areas and then see if it can take us higher. 
Okay, T2, Euro Aussie. I had uh, trade triggered here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, a trade signal here. So, I was waiting for daily demand zones so off weekly demand. Here was the weekly demand. And here was the daily demand zone. And triggered right there. There's the trade signal right there. Boom the upside and then on the four hour chart a momentum shift trade off that daily area which happened right here to the upside so what is the next trading opportunity so right now we are responding to a let's see so we got weekly area here Weekly bearish and golf, which has been tested before. So, do, do, do. Hmm. what's the next trade? So, the next trade, I believe, will be wait for this area to be taken out. Once 155.21 is taken out, then pull backs and take it long. First target will be here and then targets above. So, since that's what I'm waiting for, let's put an alert. At 155.22, Euro Aussie, Euro cat. So I wanted to take longs here. I had orders to be triggered. Never got down there. We got weekly demand and control. We're just about to hit a weekly supply. So we gotta wait now. Confirmation trades off down here. So I'm still waiting with an order down here. I think that's the best daily demand zone, weekly demand zone, yeah. Because if you take a look here... Do, 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 yeah, we're just about hitting the bottom wick of that, so I gotta wait. Euro CAD, right? You want Euro to go up, and CAD... So yeah, this could continue going higher for sure. For sure, we could see a move. Like this. Straight up here. Even break right through here. But we gotta find good areas of demand. We can even see this. But this is a poor formation, so I'm not gonna risk my money there. Okay. So did I make any notes there? Daily demands on the weekly. Yeah, so let's leave it at that. So next we have uh, Euro Pound. No longs, no shorts. Messy chart. Really nothing to look at here. Which one's going to be stronger? They're both very strong. So it's really hard to determine a good trading opportunity here. Euro Yen. Been holding because Euro Strength has been met with uh, Yen Strength as well. I think longer term. Um, we're going to get a move up from the Euro, but we're also going to get a move up from the US dollar Japanese Yen. So, uh, this one's a tough one to trade because, you know, H4 demand zone's off, daily demand zone. Oh, did that get triggered? Yeah, it did right here. Trigger. Forgot to mark it. Another tr another signal trigger. And so, um, yeah, so it's difficult to, to determine what's going to happen next. Obviously, we need this area, this daily area of supply to get out for longs. So, right now, short sticking if weekly demands on out. Yeah. So right now I'm not going to do anything else with this pair until it plays out. 
Euro Kiwi. So, what do we got here? This is a tough one. This is a tough one because we got weekly um, imbalance and control. I'm doing well. But we got weekly supply up here. Right here. That we're about to head into. Um, new daily demands was at weekly demand. So, this would be the trigger here. This would be the trade signal. Would like to see this area get taken out. A retrace, and I'll take longs. First target would be before that weekly supply, lock in some profits. So, since that's the case, let's put an alert. Ideally, we want that zone taken out. Euro New Zealand. Daily supply out. Oh, boop, forgot. One seven zero two eight. All right. Beautiful. Pound US dollar. So here's another one that's been like raging, 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 raging. Um, so we got a couple signals on this one here. Right here. To go long here long and here long as well I didn't mark that one up Oops. right here and then I was waiting for a pullback to go long again here but that never happened uh, and right now we got monthly weekly supply and control nested within a monthly area of supply so just like the uh, euro um, it wouldn't be a good idea to go in long now because we got higher time frame supply right and here is a trend line but taking a look at uh, a six month chart I can definitely see price heading higher right up here that's very possible very possible but right now we've got to deal with what we have, and that's a monthly supply and control, so no longs can be taken right now. And the institutions are going to be taking some profits on those longs, right? We've been expecting price to move up for a long time now. And we were saying with 69, with 59% long exposure and the sentiment being very bullish, you know, there was a lot of room for the institutions to add long, and you could see that that's exactly what they did this week. They added a lot to their longs. So now we're heading a supply area. So this is where they're going to start taking uh, some of those long positions off and they're going to be taking profits. All right. And once one starts taking profits, the other ones are going to see that, you know, the profit taken is, has begun and they're going to start taking profits. And then we're going to start to see uh, some pressure to the downside. So as you can see, we're kind of seeing that right now. All right, so let's go with pound Aussie. I'm looking to take a long here. Uh, new daily demand zones at weekly demand. So here's the weekly imbalance. Price is responding to the upside. And here is the new daily demand zone that I want to take a trade off of. So let's put an alert. Oh, what's going on here? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay. Pound Aussie daily demand about to head plan long. All right. So did I write that probably? Pound Aussie. A U D A U D. There we go. So yeah, I'll do some more work on it and I'm going to plan out that trade. I don't like the fact that we're reacting from a weekly bearish engulf and the weekly trend is broken. I don't like that. But I do think we're going to have more strength in the pound than we do with the Aussie cuz Aussie's just been flat. You know, here's the euro rallying higher. Here's the pound rallying higher, and the Aussie is just flat. But then again, look at that wonderful indicator. Man, that's magical. They're at 56%, but 
neutral sentiment. Isn't that unbelievable, right? The pound was at 59, just a couple points higher, but the sentiment was bullish, and look what ended up happening. Wow, unbelievable. The accuracy of the, the colorations. Whoa. Unbelievable. So that's quite telling, right? Looking at the Aussie. Neutral. So that means stronger pound than Aussie. So this could really... This trade can really shine. We could see this. Boom. And then up. It is tricky, though, because weekly is out. Daily trend is out. You know, monthly is the only thing we're, we've got going. So maybe momentum shift here and then take longs. Yeah, so I might do that. H4. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Pound Aussie did a little. Okay. Pound CAD. This is another one that I'm interested in taking higher. You know? So the pound is hitting supply and we're expecting a drop, right? But there's also a very good chance that price is going to continue going up higher. I mean, over the long term, I do believe pound is going higher and the euro is going higher. So, where's a good opportunity? I think, you know, we've got um, no trend on the monthly, but we got some nice pressure to the upside. We got a weekly trend. We remove this area of supply, which tells us that there's more demand than there is supply. Uh, so, you know, we got a nice trend up here on the daily this could end up working right here and higher slight drop to that area and then higher so a little bit overextended but I've seen it work so many times that top zone removing higher time frame supply and then a, a drop and then boom that could very much happen so I'm gonna put an alert here and I'm going to do 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 so let's see so weekly trend <sighs> tricky 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 pound cad so I'll wait for momentum to shift there be the better choice. There we go. There we go. Okay. Pound yen, messy chart, not looking to take any trades. Pound kiwi. Here's another one that I've been wanting to take to the upside, right? So pound's got a uh, big strong future ahead of it. Kiwi. neutral. Let's take a look at the Kiwi. What has the Kiwi done for us? Not much. I mean, yes, it's rally, but are we getting a massive push to the upside? Like with the Euro and Pound? No. So again, decoloration of the cells. On the spreadsheet has nailed it. It said neutral. So don't do anything. That came out, turned out to be perfectly spotted. So we have, a, just like on the, the pound CAD, we have a weekly imbalance in control. I was looking for daily demand zones off weekly demand zones. So that's this one right here. A drop and then up. Only thing is we got this weekly area supply and control. And we got a monthly bearish engulf. So momentum shifts. That's what I'm going to be looking for now. Like that. 
Okay, so next is US dollar Japanese yen. So we got that move to the downside, as we've been expecting from this area here, right? Weekly supply, now move to the downside, testing this area. So it looks like it, it could be very possible that we get a, a bigger drop to this monthly area of demand where I will be looking to take longs all day. Alright, so that's this area here. It looks very possible. We're expecting more US dollar weakness, so it's very possible to see that. In fact, I, I believe that that's what's going to end up happening. Yeah, well, we'll get a reaction here, and then, you know what, I'll look to take shorts right here. For sure. We got weekly downtrend. Let's fix that downtrend. Pum, pum. We got a weekly downtrend. Not these out, but the, uh, the force of price is to the downside. Yeah, I'll look to take shorts. If we get if we get a reaction like this, with the U.S. dollar bouncing off that weekly area of demand and the euro and pound dropping from their supplies, I'll look to take a short from there. So. Yeah, we've already tested that area, so... And I'll put an alert. There we go. Okay, US CAD. Like I said, US weakness has been coming in, coming in, coming in. You know, I still think we're going to get a bigger drop, but look, we haven't even hit this area here. We haven't even hit this uh, weekly demand zone. And US dollars hitting weekly demand. And the pound and, uh, and the euro hitting monthly supply. And we're still like hovering up here. So I think um, if the US dollar does continue to drop and this one gets to as low as here, we're going to see a big move up. I do believe that. You know, we are still within the three month demand zone that removed the six month area of supply. So that's strong, right? So this one's looking really good. And what's the coloration of the cells telling us? Again, neutral. Look at that. Perfect. I mean, it's unbelievable. Just how accurate, how amazing this spreadsheet is. Unbelievable. So, um, so do nothing. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I'm doing nothing with this one. So doing nothing with this one as well. So daily demand is long at weekly demand. Yeah, I'll do that. Shorts within monthly supply. Yep, higher. This one took out a monthly area of supply, I guess you could call it, leaving demand down here. But it wasn't the greatest area of supply, so take it with a grain of salt. I'm not looking to take any trades here. Need daily supply zones at weekly supply. No shorts. No shorts. Nothing. No trades on this pair yet. Until we get things clear. Okay, so US dollar Swiss. Trade signal short here on the daily. Uh, one here, one here, and the last trade signal short was there. Look at that risk reward. Beautiful, huh? Short trade triggered here, and boom. So. Uh, what now? So this one's a difficult chart now because we got monthly area of demand and control. Deeper penetration from the previous area here. Um, weekly demand slightly triggered here, but great reaction. Should still have demand even at this level. So that's what we're seeing now. Nice pull up. Um, I think shorts here would be good. You know, we got the weekly trend down, we got daily trend down, but monthly demand still in control. That's the only thing here, but it could work really well. So maybe this is what I'm going to do. Weekly supplies on short. 
H4 short at daily supply zone. Daily supply zone short. Yeah. H4 moment shift down. Uh, that's daily supply. And I'll place a alert. Nothing else. That's pretty much it. Bitcoin. What garbage. All that talk. I told everybody stay away from this. And so much. So much money has been lost. So many people lost so much money. It's ridiculous. So. I'm not touching this one. I don't even like to look at it because it's just a ridiculous chart. Anyways, went through all the pairs, and it's been a long video, 41 minutes, so I'm going to cut it short right here. Actually, we're done, so there's nothing to cut, but there's nothing more, much more to say. We went through everything in detail, so it's time to move on. hope this was informative and helpful to you. Until next time, have a good trading week.